We're here now with a Reverend from Reverend and the Makers. How are you, sir? Feeling good. Enjoying it. Looking forward to uh, to playing. It's going to be a good a good vibe and also um, lots of really cool people playing. So yeah, exciting times. How does it feel to be on the the same kind of uh, list of people as Graham Coxon and Paul Weller and The Enemy and so so many good bands? Yeah, amazing. You know, I like a lot of bands. I like I like. Uh, your man Tom from Enemy is a good boy, you know, very, uh, very sincere individual with a lot of passion, so a lot of time for that guy and Supergrass I think are an amazing band, you know, if you look at the breadth of their career, it's, uh, you know what I mean, unbelievable, so happy day, I can't wait, it's, uh, it's a dream come true really. Could you tell us a bit about what the uh, event is, is about today? Yeah man, it's for crisis charity and it's in order to raise money for crisis and uh, the homeless, which I think um, in, in you know 21st century Britain is not a problem we should have really. You know what I mean, given the affluence in this country, but still there's people sat outside shop doorways, you know what I'm saying? So I think it's, uh, it's high time we address that situation and uh, anything you can do to help is a good thing, innit? Have you ever been as unlucky to be affected by homelessness yourself? No, I've never been, only, only, only for a night or two, I've never been homeless permanently. I don't think, uh, I've slept rough like once when we'd have to keep me out once, but um, I don't think like, I don't, it's never been a problem that's, uh, that's afflicted me, but I know, I know people who have been uh, affected by it and stuff, and it ain't a nice scene, you know what I mean? So what, what can we uh, expect from Reverend and the Makers tonight? Uh, a banger, an absolute banger as always. So should be good, we played at the Roundhouse the other night actually. And I'm, uh, I'm in trouble with the venue because after the gig I went outside with my guitar and we played in the street and uh, loads of property got damaged and stuff which apparently uh, reflects badly on the venue so I'm in a little bit of bother with them currently so I'll attempt to redeem myself by playing well this evening. You, you uh, a little bang there, but you often uh, play outside the venue after your gigs. Could you tell us a little bit why, when you started doing that and why you do that? I started doing it like about maybe, um, let me think now about six months ago and the reason I do it is because it's good to make that connection with the fans you know because I don't want to be um, some kind of rock star sat in his dressing room talking to liggers you know what I mean I, I don't really like the way the music industry conducts itself especially um, you know in the last few years it seems to be like kind of last days of rule and everyone seems slightly decadent and the plus the fact is how, how can you um, how can you write songs about people and for people unless you talk to real people you know what I mean if you're surrounding yourself with like media types and people in bands all the time then you know what I mean you're not going to uh, you're not going to know anything about real life, are you? So, I don't know, it's good to go out there. And if I've said anything in the magazine, what they agree with or don't agree with or whatever, they can come and talk to me and we can have a debate, you know what I mean? Because I think all the debates being lost within society. You know what I'm saying? There's certain things I like to talk about in, in interviews and in my songs that, like, post 9-11, there's not really any artists who discuss these issues. So it's good to get a debate, and if then people want to come and talk to me, then they can do so. All the better for it. So do you think you're trying to build a more interactive relationship with your fans that might have been lost? Yeah, definitely. Within society at large, we need a more interactive society. People don't talk to each other anymore because they kind of closeted off, going to work in a steel box to sit in another box and then go home and you know sit on the internet and kind of being doped on, on like what are quite fruitless um, things like pop idol and stuff and they're blind to the reality of what goes on, you know what I mean? And it's up to me, I think, and other artists to speak out against it because, like I said to you before, in the past we had, we had a lot of artists who did that kind of thing, but... Um, post 9-11 new artist there's hardly anyone really um, have you have you written any songs yourself about homelessness before this event um, I've wrote, written poems about it before and also um, yeah there's a couple of lyrics in a, in a song I used to have um, I had this kind of concept that you know like a guy who's, who's um, sleeps in a shop doorway he's like um, maybe less than a foot away from all his uh, hopes and dreams but yeah he's a million miles away from it you know what I mean there's a cruel irony there so there's lots of lots of things to be having lyrics of, uh, I think in that, in that kind of, you know what I mean? It's a big subject, man. There's a lot of things you can uh, you can say about it. So I'd just like to ask you just about what what kind of inspirations you you inspired you to like become a musician and a poet. Um, telling the truth. I like people who are uh, rebels and you know what I mean, truth tellers and that, and art cowards who are after the money. So my heroes are people like uh, Chuck D, Bob Marley, John Lennon, Joe Strummer, Lenny Bruce, Mamie Dali. You know what I mean? People who stand for something and mean something and reflect their world accurately, you know what I mean? Because I look around me and you'd never know there were 40 people died in Baghdad yesterday, would you? You know what I mean? Modern day Vietnam, but retrospectively, everybody's like, oh, weren't they brave stopping Vietnam, all them musicians? Yeah, well, where are they now? You know what I'm saying? John Lennon would be turning in his grave, so would Bob Marley and Joe Strummer. 
the good state, seats theatre are for these musicians this day and age, you know what I'm saying? So could you play, play a little impromptu song for us now? Um, yeah, and we should go outside though because it's a bit... Uh... So um, tell us about your... Did you see you're saying Lenny Bruce there? Are you a fan of Bill Hicks as well? You alright mate? Sound. Yeah, Lenny Bruce, I love him, yeah. yeah I love him, I think he's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a hero, Lenny Bruce, you know what I mean? We could do with some Lenny Bruce's this day and age. We need these people more than ever, but we ain't got them, you know what I'm saying? Which is, uh, just a, it's, just a, it's just a shame, man, you know what I mean? Everyone seems to be more business sure than show business this day and age, you know what I'm saying? So, I'll do you a song, it's called Politics on Pogo Sticks. You can't piss on my shoes Tell me it's raining You can't censure me Should I start complaining Now all the members of parliament Are neither use nor ornament When there's a line lips and battle flips Politics on pogo sticks We don't want to hear Can't tie you down Doing hopscotch for grown-ups Then go with your trousers down So why don't you own up Since all the members of Parliament And neither each nor ornament I wonder how it really come to this Politics on pogo sticks Capitalists or are you socialists doing your politics on pogo sticks? Massacres that don't just for kicks with your weaponry, you're almost hypocrites. Then the pilots are not Line lips and that would fix politics on pogo sticks. Thanks a lot. That was. Reverend, hope you had a lovely gig tonight. Thank you.